Hello, welcome back to another installment on my series, The Emotionality of Politics. This is a part of Goals Don't Have Feelings, which is a program I've been running for two years now. I'm in my third year anniversary in the month of October, and I normally have co-hosts, Tasha and Nisha. We're still a triad, so don't think that they're gone anywhere. We're just working on some things as we go into the third year. So I'm launching this season with a, um, what do you call it? A series, I already said that, with the series because the one that I did at the beginning of our shutdown and quarantine went over so well. This particular one is focusing on the emotionality of politics, politics, and I've asked some people to join me. So I appreciate you signing in tonight as well. When you think of the emotionality of politics, what actually comes to mind? Like, just lay it in the chat for me. What do you think about when I say how emotional is politics for you? For me, it has been interesting. I can say that it has uh, been frustrating. Uh, sometimes I get angry. Sometimes I laugh out loud. Sometimes I'm in disbelief. But I want to know from you, what are some of the emotions that you have after watching some of the debates, after watching the commentary on the news, even talking with your friends and family? What are some emotions that have come up for you? While you're doing that, let me introduce myself to the people who have never been to my show before. I'm Dr. Stacia Alexander. I am a trained clinician. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm a licensed professional counselor and my doctorate is in clinical psychology. I've been in private practice for over 20 years, managing a group where we work with different people because I have a diverse staff. I also work at a college, which is a HBCU in Dallas, Paul Quinn. I am over the clinic, the mental health and wellness clinic to help the students understand the importance of mental health in their everyday lives. As well, I've authored a book, co-authored with my husband and my two kids. I have two kids and a bonus. That bonus one was out there doing his own thing when we wrote the book. So you have four authors on this book and it's called The Balancing Act Family Guide. What we talk about in that book is basic principles of parenting. You have to pick that up. You can go to my website to get it at www.staciaalexander.com. Also, I created this project called August Accountability. The tagline on it is, Goals are important. I run that once a year. This wasn't as robust, I can be honest with you, just because of everything that was going on, but it's based on solid curriculum. We have four quadrants that we work in, which is uh, self-care, professional, relationships, and spiritual. I almost forgot, spiritual. We work in those four quadrants to raise your level of accountability so that you can have a greater sense of peace. You can also find that on my website at StaciaAlexander.com. If you haven't already, do this for me. Invite people to this conversation. The reason I say that is because we need to open up the dialogue. We need to talk more openly about different parameters of mental health. It's not just about mental illness. It's about actually focusing on all of those things that make us whole. I appreciate you for joining me in my online presence. If you can just continue to comment, engage in the chat, maybe even invite some people, if you will, I'd appreciate it. And then if you're really bold, do a watch party. I love those. I love to go back and see the commentary on those. So this series will go on for this entire week before the election. Then we get to the election. I'll be watching closely. I don't think I'm gonna go to sleep that night because the last time I went to sleep, you saw who won the election. So maybe it was out on me. If I had stayed up all night, we would have had a different outcome. You think? I don't know. But here we go. That Thursday after the election on November 5th, I'm going to host a free webinar for everybody to talk about the emotionality of politics. How are we handling it? And we're going to talk about some ways to debrief. It's totally free, no charge, but you do need to join in because one, I want to hear how you guys are handling all of this. And then I want to give you some tips on how you can debrief, regroup, and come off of all of this just chaos that we've been experiencing. That's the way I describe it. I don't know about you. So on this edition of Goals Don't Have Feelings, which is a special series, remember, I'm talking to John Warren. He is the Dallas County Clerk, and I asked him to join me because I want you to understand the connection between politics locally and politics nationally. Let's get started. All right. Yeah. Okay. So on this edition of Goals Don't Have Feelings, I am speaking with John Warren. He is the, the Dallas County Clerk, right? So this yes, that's correct. Any kind of 
marriage license, divorce papers? Is that where you go to get that stuff? Well, um, I actually uh, issue the marriage license, the divorce, the, the divorce. That's part of the uh, another uh, elected official's responsibility. Oh, OK. So you get the good part. OK, great. All right. I get the good so, part. Yes. It, OK, so I ask you to come on so that we can make that connection between local politics and national politics because mm -hmm. you're so caught up in national yeah. policy politics and really diminish how much power they have uh, locally and what they can do directly with their community. So I appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. I think that's I think that's very important for people to understand, because one of the issues that we have and one of the things you'll see with a lot of elections, Stacey, um, Dr. Alexander, is that they always talk about down ballot, down ballot, down ballot. And, and um and so that's what we encourage people to do, because down ballot is actually where the local elections are. It starts with the federal, then it goes down to the local election. So it's okay. important that um, that everybody goes. Make sure when you vote, make sure that you complete the ballot all the way down, because that's what matters. See, I never heard of that term, but it makes sense. Yes. And I do mm -hmm. sit there. Sometimes I don't recognize some of the people. I'm definitely more informed this time because mm -hmm. a mother shared the um, it, they're not called the initiatives, but. Uh, she shared she shared what we needed to vote on in our local mm -hmm. elections. And then she yeah. also told us, or another person told us that sometimes they don't give you the ballot for the local elections. Can you comment on that? Like I didn't. No, no. When you vote, it's going to be a complete ballot. But the thing yeah. is, um, if you're not looking all the way down the ballot, I, I'll just put it this way. Before you go vote. Everybody should do research on what's on the ballot because there, there will be some uh, some resolutions or some amendments on the ballot. And I think that may be what you're referring to. But you never see any information about those things. So you have to make sure you read those carefully. Some may be uh, increasing some funding for some projects or something as it relates to the um, more so the municipalities and some for the state. Mm -hmm. And so you have to make sure that you read those because those have an impact on you and it may impact your tax rate. So you always read, you always read those. It may be a constitutional amendment or it may be a resolution or something as it relates to um, some local function that the, um, whether it's a uh, county city, um, a function of the county or city. So you always want to pay attention to those. Yeah. It, and it's so complicated. I think that's what loses a lot of people that it's so complicated. Yeah. Well, but, and, you know, um, you know, my son voted for the he, he turned 18. That wasn't an election at the time. So when he was uh, 19, he had his he voted in his first election. It was a municipal election. Mm -hmm. And so I educated him on all of the positions that's on the ballot and what those positions do. Mm -hmm. But th those never change. And so you learn what those positions are and why they are and why they're on the ballot. So once you learn that, then you turn your focus to who the candidates are, mm -hmm. what their background is, and do they really have the qualifications to fill those positions? Because the truth of the matter is some people shouldn't be running for election. They should not be running for office. Um, the, uh, I, I don't like to say the president because I, I never refer to him as such. But um, that's a perfect example. A lot of people run for office because they have personal agendas, and that's the absolute wrong thing. If you're not running to better to be a, to be a, a voice for your constituents, then you're in the wrong place. You know, OK, so we, we're going to go down this road and I'm glad you're here because mm -hmm. I do. Um, I do. I admire the level of commitment that you have to community and also how you use your voice to educate people like following you on Facebook yes. um, and seeing some of the commentary that people engage in. And a lot of times I don't comment because I want to be fully informed. I definitely don't want to ever come across as ignorant. And I can certainly be that on some things because I haven't studied to detail. That's just mm -hmm. how I am. But even seeing the information, it's like, oh, let me go look that up. You know, like you told me something during our pre-interview. I wrote that down because mm -hmm. I'm going to go back and Google that and yeah. learn more about it. And I think conversation like this will open it up as well. Because I know for certain people are not talking about the emotionality of politics. Yeah. But you're going to be really angry. One of the first emotions will go to if you erroneously or accidentally vote for someone and you hadn't read what their platform was. But, hey, you voted for them because you you just going down checking boxes. Yeah. And and that's a problem. I, and I, I talk all, I talk all the time about um the most dangerous um, voter is an uneducated voter. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, I learned um, when I got into politics a long time ago, I learned that um, uh, your place on the ballot matters. Uh, mm -hmm. People generally don't look past the first three 
um, um, positions on the ballot. And they also pay attention to the name and also, oddly enough, how a person looks. And so you can be you can be the dumbest person in the world. But if, if you are if you are a good looking guy or a, wom or a woman, most likely you're going to get somebody's vote. OK. Mm -hmm. OK. But their faces aren't on the ballot. You mean just like seeing them before? Yeah, you know, when, when they when they send out mailers or or mm. something, you, you and and the majority of the time they they've um, they've had some photo work, some Photoshop work done, some some cleanup work, and so they um they they present themselves really well on paper, and uh, seventy five percent of the time, all of the credentials and all the experience that they have is totally erroneous. And so they, they just like um, and I'll, I'll use a perfect example. Uh, we have uh, my friend Colin Allred, who's a, who's a congressman who's running for re-election. He has an opponent, um, uh, okay. Genevieve Collins. And, and she and she said and, and they say, oh, she's she's a businesswoman and, and, and uh, she create, she create jobs. No, she does not. She has one little small business and that is, and that is it. So they OK, so I see what you're saying. They exaggerate. They find yep. something and build on it. So watch they exaggerate. Okay, you know, I'm looking at everything from the emotionality. If people vote on level of attraction, so meaning we're, we're trying to appeal to what you like. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you have an Americanized standard of beauty. So who you are attracted to. Is who you're comfortable with. We're at a greater disposition than if I show up on a ballot in yard signs and stuff with my natural hair, right? Well, and, and I'll share this with you. And it's um, one of my experiences during my first election in 2006 before I, I, I won my, I took office in uh, January 2007. Okay. But in, in 2006, uh, Stacia, I'm meeting with my um, with 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 all my uh, all the people that are supporting me that are funding my campaign, and I come up with uh, my um, my my platform and the language on the uh, that on why I'm running and the things that I want to do, mm -hmm. and I have my picture on there and it's a really nice picture, and so I'm showing this to all these um, white supporters, by the way, mm -hmm. and um, one particular lawyer she and, and they're they're passing around they're looking at it. And one particular lawyer, she said, um, she says, John, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but uh, you can't send this to North Dallas. Mm. And I said, what do you mean? She said, she said, she said, I know it will hurt your feelings, but you can send the mailer, but it can't have your picture on it. Mm. And so I actually had to create two mailers, one with my picture on it that I want to send to a certain demographic, which is what you're talking about, your, your natural look that would go over really well based on the demographics that you're going to send it to. And others, you may want to uh, restyle it to what they would see as a uh, more professional look, not um, not as uh, ethnic, if, if you will, as um, as some people may perceive it to be. And people really don't focus about um, what it is that you're going to bring to the table. What is your experience and, 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 and the difference that you're going to make? And the way you look plays no role in how successful you'll be in representing them. So it's the laws of attraction you still have to overcome. That's yeah. not good. So and, you, and and also and also uh, we we still have to deal with uh, racial disparity, right? And and uh, and, and uh, racism as it relates to elections and uh, who will generate more votes, who someone will vote for. Just like I said, I had to take my picture off um, the, so the you original sent a mailer out with information. Excuse me. You sent a mailer out with information. Yes. Mm. I had a, a two page mailer, um, and on the um, the right the, the left corner it had my picture. I had on a nice suit. And um, and so the but and that was the one that went to south of I-30. Mm -hmm. The one that went to north of I-30 was the exact same thing, but without my photo. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so what made you uh, go run for the Dallas County clerk? Like what was what did it look like? Well, I've been I've worked for Dallas County 13 years before I ran. OK. And, um, I was uh, my background was heavy into um, uh, courts and technology. And that's a very good question, uh, by the way, because my platform in 2006 was to create virtual offices. And as it would be, that's what everybody is trying to push for in 2020. And uh, I, got, I, got, I got a lot of pushback from when I was elected. I got a lot of pushback from the county commissioners and count and, and judges because they just they just didn't understand the concept. They saw uh, they saw offices as being uh, limited to the walls, the four walls that we were in. But um, but I said, you know what? I ran because 
uh, there was the, the, the county clerk's office was heavy. It, it was extremely antiquated, mm -hmm. heavy in the paper. Nobody really had a pleasant experience when they were there. Mm -hmm. And even when I engaged with the county clerk's office at the time at, as, a, as an employee, as I worked for a judge. And when I would engage the county clerk's office, it wasn't a good there wasn't a good experience there because the, the county clerk wasn't engaged. She didn't care about anything. And so I ran because there was a need for improvements. And okay. um, it, and and, um, and someone would ask me, they said, so why exactly do you, would you run for office? I said, at some point, you if you have to run when you stop waiting for somebody else to make the change that you are capable of doing. Okay. And, and that's why I ran. Okay. And how was that process for you emotionally? Like, take us through the way. It was, um, it was exciting a lot of the times because it was something new. It was uh, disappointing, uh, like I talked about the um, my mailer, and uh, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress because you you really have to I mean travel all over the all over the county to make yourself known. There, Dallas County has thirty two cities, and I was actually in thirty two cities, and uh, sometimes I would I, of course I live in Grand Prairie, and I would have to go to I remember one time uh, leaving home and going to Lake Highlands to a um, a um, a um, a political group a meeting. Mm -hmm. And the only people there was me and two other candidates. And I literally drove 25 miles for nothing. And and I just I sat with the other candidates and we and we had coffee and talked about elections and how crazy the um, the electoral process is and, and, and running for office. But um, but a lot of times it was um, really engaging and really informing because you got to meet people and you and um, and you got to hear what they cared about. And often a lot of times. They wasn't even aware of the responsibilities of the office that I was running for. And right. a, lot of, a lot of people still don't understand as it relates to um, Dallas County. My office is the most diverse in the county. You have a lot of a lot of elected officials, the majority of elected officials. They do. They are they are elected and they do one. They would do, they do one job mm -hmm. as it relates to me and my office. We talked about marriage license. So I issue marriage license, uh, birth certificates, death certificates. I'm, so I'm over the vital records for the, for uh, for Dallas County. And that's all cities with the exception of the city of Dallas. But when you buy your house, your deed is recorded with my office. When you pay yourself, when you pay your house off, you when you pay that mortgage off, that release of lien is filed with my office. Everything related to your deed is is recorded in my office. I'm also over the uh, we have five civil courts. They're called the county courts at law. We have three probate courts. One of those probate courts are mental health courts. And I have uh, 13 misdemeanor courts. And I'm also a member of the uh, commissioner's court. A lot of people see when they're looking at looking at TV, they see the county judge and they see four commissioners. But there is another member of the commissioner's court. And that's me. But I'm not one that I'm a, I'm a non voting member of the commissioner's court. So I'm, I'm as a, as a custodian of records. So that's my responsibility. But I'm also responsible for collecting all court costs and fines on behalf of the county. So if you if you are arrested or if you if you if, you, if there's a case, if you have a criminal a misdemeanor case, when you're paying when you're paying your court costs and fines, you're paying that money to me. I'm also responsible for trust accounts for individuals. So if if uh, either of your kids were involved in an accident when they were when they were under the age of 18 mm -hmm. and uh, they were awarded. Fifty thousand dollars, and mm -hmm. uh, you and your husband—they're like, "Wow, you got fifty thousand dollars!" No, uh, they, they didn't get the fifty thousand dollars. I got the fifty thousand dollars, and so I, I hold that money in trust until you become of age of um, where you where, where you where that money is dispersed to you. I'm also responsible for um, for um, trust accounts for people who are incapacitated. So, like, you may have somebody who's wealthy and they have a child who's incapacitated. That that money is going to go to the child, but it has to be it has to be in the possession of somebody who's going to maintain and be responsible for it. So, I actually maintain uh, trust accounts for minors and incapacitated individuals, almost a hundred million dollars. Really? Yes. And so and so there's a there's a lot that I have to do. But and and none of that I can do in an antiquated environment. I mean, there's there's too much technology that's available. And that's what people aren't understanding why I wanted to change all of these things. And, I, and I've actually been successful, but it has not come without um, um, a lot of work. Whereas now I, I, with with uh, with COVID-19, my my objective is on cruise control because everybody else is wanting to do it. Yeah. And so you really have to pay attention to um, why someone is running for office. And, 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 and you I would tell anybody who's listening, make sure that you ask them every question that comes to your mind as it relates to why they're why they're running for office. And one thing that every all, every, all your listeners need to understand. When I'm applying for um, 
I say when if I if I'm buying a car or if I'm applying for a loan or something and it says who you're and it says your employer. Yes. Do you know what I write? No. Citizens of Dallas County. Oh, really? Because you if you're if you live in Dallas County, then you're my boss. OK. Yeah. That's, and so, I, wish, and so a lot, a lot, I wish all civic employees thought about thought like that. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, be, because I work at Dallas County and Dallas County pays my salary. I don't work for Dallas County because I'm I'm an independent elected official who's elected by the citizens, the voters of Dallas County. So they're actually my boss. Gotcha. I learned a lot. That was good. <laughs> yeah. that was, I have to do an organizational chart. I didn't know all of this stuff. <laughs> the Dallas County clerk's office. Yeah, and I, have, I, um, I still do business like my business is in Dallas. So I remember. Mm -hmm. That. I don't know what document it was, but I had to come down there and I may have waved at you or something, but I remember seeing your signature on it and thinking, mm -hmm. this is cool. What, yeah. what, what you, that was an assumed name application. That's what you do. Probably picking yeah. that up. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, when, you, when you start a business, you got to do a DBA and those are recorded in my office as well. I probably had to pick one up or something. I don't know because I've yeah. had that business for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's switch gears for a little bit. Okay. What shocks you the most? So shock is the emotion. What shocks you the most about the political climate we're in right now? The fact that it is so chaotic, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I, I think a lot of people uh, feel the same way I am. What we hold true as being an institution, uh, the Trump administration has just totally thrown that out. It, it's like uh, there are no rules. But right. there are rules. Decimated. Yeah. And, and, um, uh, they don't understand that um, the president is not an individual. The president isn't. The presidency is an institution. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, you are you are no longer yourself. You don't belong to you. You don't belong to your family mm -hmm. because you hold the lives of every citizen in the, in the United States in your hand. You're making decisions based on their welfare and their benefit and they're relying on you um, just like the uh, the president is withholding information about his uh, his health in the and the COVID 19. Mm -hmm. uh, that is that that's and everybody says that's a matter of national security it is mm -hmm. you are no longer yourself and the fact that they just totally disregard everything that has built has been built and one of the things that bother me is that as crazy as it is, as crazy as the United States is during normal times, we actually have the 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 uh, the, the framers, those who framed the the Constitution. They actually did a wonderful job based on how society should work. Mm -hmm. And um, and we and we, and the, uh, this administration just totally disregarded that. And the fact that one of the things that really bothers me is that. Um, the Republicans see someone who's totally just tearing up their party and the um, and what the Republicans, um, uh, their platform is and what their beliefs are. They've allowed someone to come in and totally just tear it up and just throw everything out of the way and just just rip it to shreds and just totally disregard. And they stand by and allow it to happen. But have you seen the commentary of late? Like, like, I think they're they realize that this is coming to an end. But there, more of them are speaking up and saying this is ridiculous. Like I don't know, Trump you need to come on Twitter. They need to shut this down. This is just totally un-American. Like I've seen a couple. Like I told you, I stay on CNN, so mm -hmm. you get the interviews all day. But I think that's what shocks me the most as well. Mm -hmm. um, I knew he was gonna win. Like we had that discussion in the household. I knew yeah. he was gonna win going to bed. My husband yeah. was like, there's no way. I say, yes, he's going to win because white is right. Like that that's the bottom line. And mm -hmm. they were so tired of Obama. It was almost like revenge. Yeah. And they could not separate that. Like he mm -hmm. had really come out against Obama. So I knew that dude was gonna win, but I am shocked by how much like you they have allowed him to annihilate just basic yeah. principles of our country. That yeah. that's shocking to me as well. Yeah. Yeah, to, because uh, people don't understand. I mean, you're 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 elected to do a certain job, but with that comes leadership responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And when you just basically stand by and watch someone do what they're doing, and you display no leadership, then uh, then you're certainly not someone who the, who uh, who should be elected to office to represent people when you're not representing them. And I just think about all the Republicans. 
who are standing by and um, watching um, the Trump administration do what they're doing. You're, they're also destroying, uh, you're, you're not representing your, the people in back home in your district that you're, that you're supposed to represent. Oh, because yeah, that's, that's, because that's not something that, that they are, that they are um, um, supporting. And so when you do that, you say, well, I don't care about, I don't care about my constituents. And the reason they don't care about their constituents, and I hope your listeners are, list your listeners are listening, the reason they don't care about their constituents is because their constituents won't hold them accountable. Any voter has the right to go knock on their door and demand to see the person that they that they voted and that that's who's representing them. Well, but then when they do that, they call out the uh, military. <laughs> They're afraid. But, Life is threatened. But you know, but 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 that's when you go back to you. That's when you go back home. And you talk to everybody that you know, and you tell them about your experience, and you say, "We need to find somebody that's going to actually represent us." Right. That's where that local politics comes from. Yes. So mm -hmm. you know, I saw you go with your son to go vote. I saw that. Yes. We, so what we've done over here, we've had to do absentee voting because you know everybody's traveling, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, little gal has been dogged about it. Like they sent her, they rejected her absentee mm -hmm. ballot and say that she didn't complete all of the um the I uh -huh. well then you have two of us looking at this and she did right yeah. so but she said that's okay I'm gonna send it off again I have enough time and she got it the second time around so yeah. how what would you tell like three tips you would give young people in terms of being attuned to politics and what they need to know what are some tips like three that you would give them right I, I would tell not not just not just uh, younger voters, but everybody. Okay. Make sure that you go to your elect the, the the elections office in your county, just because every county is different. Dallas County does uh, does uh, we uh, the way we um, um, uh, the processes we have for doing elections is different than in Collin in our neighboring county. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it is it's still about it's still about making voting accessible to uh, to the vote to those who are registered to vote. Okay. But you always go to the elections office, to the elections website to look at the what's actually real and true and look at that information. And by all means, if you have an issue with your with uh, with with a ballot, you always call the office. You always call the elections office and speak. Okay. to someone. Got it. So hopefully they'll pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Do you think we have enough people of color running for office. Like, is it increasing or dis decreasing? Well, I'll tell you, in uh, Dallas County, we have uh, more African-American elected officials than probably any county in the state. Uh, Harris County, we had, uh, I think were, Harris County has, has had an increase. In Dallas County, I believe we have maybe, of all the, and I think there's about, um, Maybe about ninety elected officials in Dallas County, and probably seventy of those are African American. Really? Yes. Oh, little known fact. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you, are you thinking about running for another office? <laughs> I, I I would wish I can answer that, but uh, I can't. <laughs> okay, so I have. I mean, to uh, I, I, I still have time to consider uh, if uh, what I'm going to do or if I'm going to run for re-election. But I know that um, one thing's for certain, um, I won't be retiring. I'll just put it that way. OK, because yeah. you have two more years on this term now, right? Yeah, I have two more okay. years on this term. And um, but, you know, I, I, I love what I do. I love helping people and I love being engaged uh, while I rep while I represent one of many departments in Dallas County. I serve as an executive sponsor on a number of on a number of initiatives that Dallas County has. I'm engaged at the national level. I'm on the on the finance committee for the uh, National Association of Counties. I'm the uh, chairman of the board of directors for Dallas Central Appraisal District. I'm on a lot of I'm on a lot of I'm on the um, the Texas Supreme Court's Technology Committee. So I'm I'm engaged at a, at a lot of levels. So and so I, I'm I'm going to stay engaged. And um, I'll just say, uh, whatever direction the good Lord leads me, that's that's where I'm going to go. So, what would you tell someone who is thinking about going into politics? Um, I would tell them, make sure that you have tough skin mm. because um, um, pretty much in, in every race, there's um, um, there's always somebody else who also wants that position. And, you know, politics, there's a lot of there, there used to be. And, and uh, um, 
the voters have responded in a way that they say we don't like all the all the mudslinging and negative uh, ads, and so they, we're, they're trying to get people to be more um, serious and professional about uh, managing a campaign. But if if you're if for anybody who's uh, considering running for, running for office, I would say make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Okay. Uh, don't do it for don't do it for uh, personal gain. Don't do it for um, uh, other agendas. Make sure that you're there to serve because that's exactly what's going to be required because there's no way for you to es uh, to escalate to any other position if um, if you're not um, effective in the one that in the in the position that you're running for. How do you but, think people get caught up? Like I'm just thinking, I, I know I wouldn't run for office, but I'm just thinking about people who do. And, you know, like, I know you started out great. I know you started out good, like you said, wanting to do it for the people. Mm -hmm. Where do you think they get caught up? Like, I'm thinking about a couple of people I don't want to name, not yeah. necessarily from, you know, our area. But it just amazes me how far off the trail they go. Yeah, but I understand that um, control is a very powerful thing. Yeah. Um, I. Being in the limelight, having a title, and that that means a lot to some people. Yeah, you go. And, um, and of course, a, a lot a lot of times, you know, one of the things I learned is that um, not everybody that supports you are with you. A lot of people that will support you are there because they want something from you. Mm. And um, and I, and I I would tell people I would have um, donors write me uh, write me big checks, and I would say, and I would tell everybody, make sure it make sure you understand that I appreciate your support, but I'm in this for one reason. And that's the, and that's the, and that's the, for the betterment of Dallas County. I said, I don't do favors. Yeah. Yeah. And so if, if uh, you, you may write me that one check and you may not write me another one, but, but understand that I'm, I, I don't want, I'm not going to owe anybody anything. And, and the good thing for, about my, uh, my race is that the Dallas democratic party, they were, they had their, um, uh, uh, they favored one candidate over another, and I was not the candidate that they that they favored. I was more of an outsider, and so I fought my way past everything to um, to to win the election. Of course, my I, and I basically ran on my experience and what I was bringing to the table, and it was good for me because I didn't owe anybody anything because nobody helped me. Get, nobody helped me. Uh, they nobody did anything for me to get me where I am, and it was it was all the work that I've done for myself. And so. Are you the favorite candidate now, like the last time you ran? Actually, the last time I ran, I didn't have an opponent at all. I didn't have a, a an opponent in the primary election, which means I, I, in the March election. And I didn't have one in the uh, in the in the general election. So I didn't have a Republican opponent or a Democratic opponent. Well, so <laughs> it, 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 it's funny you say that because you you bring that up because my first election I was about as green as you can possibly get. Only thing I knew was that I didn't know anything about politics. Only thing I knew was that I wanted to be effective and I wanted to do some really good things for Dallas County. Okay. And um, the very first, um, um, you, you know, yeah, a very first uh, political event I went to. Man, I was stumbling all over the place. I was stuttering. I, nothing I said made any sense. And uh, one of our state representatives, she when I walked off the stage, she looked at me. She just shook her head. She said, "You got to do better." <laughs> <laughs> but um, but if um, but who that person? If you saw that person and you saw me campaign today, you would say that could not have been you. Okay. And so, I mean, it's a big difference because one of the things that I like about uh, about my um, I had a hard time when I when I first took office because a lot of people didn't want me there. And you're not retiring. And I'm not retiring. No. But the answer is yeah. still out on the. Now, I, I will say, and I I don't know um, to the extent that um, this will go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I did, um, I, of course, I worked with um, the, um, the Joe Biden's Texas um, campaign, and we were mm -hmm. successful. And um, I did mention to. Um, to his um, Texas director, that I was interested in a um, in a presidential appointment, and so we, we'll see how that goes. And if if, I, if that's an opportunity, I would be happy to serve uh, to serve uh, the Biden Harris administration and work with um, a lot of the other congressmen that would be coming on and um, and serving and uh, and uh, serving Dallas County proudly and as well as the country. But um, who knows? I'll, I'll see. Or would you have to move to DC? What's that? Would they be local or would you have to move to D.C.? I guess it would depend on um, on the role I play. It, it may okay. be something that uh, I do locally or it may require me to move. But 
Either way, I'm, I'm in either way. Well, yeah. thank you for coming on and kind of really shedding the light on more than I expected. I can tell you yeah. that. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. All of the different responsibilities as a Dallas County clerk. Mm hmm. Yeah, but um, but again, um, and I, and thank you for having me. But I I cannot mm -hmm. I I always tell people, Stacia, um, a lot of people they they say, well, my vote won't count. I my vote won't count. I was actually home in Louisiana, uh, one November. This was years ago, and um, I was looking at the results, and there was a candidate that won, or should I say, a candidate that lost by one vote. And so every vote does matter. And uh, and I always tell people and this is this is what I'll tell um, everybody who's uh, who may be listening to um, listening to your um, to your to your webinar, your WebEx. Make sure that you vote because your life depends on it. Wow. And the, 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 the voting, you are you're invested in your future and you're also investing in the future of, of, uh, of your kids, your, 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 your spouses and everybody else. And wow. um, understand that these these things they have lasting effects and so and so that that's why i mean if you're if you're you, everybody should be willing to spend 30 minutes or an hour investing in their future and that that's how important voting is right and, yeah. and we have to have these conversations because people yeah. they're not getting it i think they're getting it more now mm -hmm. because of what has happened over the last yeah. and a half years yeah. but i don't you know i hope more people get it i'm glad you came on i'm gonna yeah. have Actually, after the election next week, I'm mm -hmm. going to have a debriefing mm -hmm. on that Thursday afterwards uh, just to open up the discussion. Like I have you, I'm interviewing, but I'm going to have different people uh, in, again, a webinar just mm -hmm. to talk openly and give them some tips on how to debrief from this tumultuous election season. Uh, <laughs> and then where to go from here in terms of emotionally handling the responsibilities that yeah. we have. Being involved, yeah. being aware, and what does that look for us? Look mm -hmm. like for us on a personal level and yeah. as a community. So I appreciate you joining the conversation okay. because I think that's going to propel more discussion. Like you mm -hmm. said, our lives depend on it. And I even read one statistic where the correlation between mental health services and the politicians that you elect, like, mm -hmm. I mean, exactly. and people don't think about yeah. that, like mm -hmm. for the accessibility of services and things like that. We need to talk well, more about it. And, and that's all that's that's at the, that that kind of also goes into this issue that they're talking about uh, systemic racism. I, I think people don't understand what they what that means when it comes to quality health care. Uh, mm -hmm. There is there is there is a disparity between uh, health care that that um, white patients may get uh, versus right. black that black patients. Right. There's a disparity in um, in job opportunity. There's right. a disparity in um, in in job promotions. Right. There's a disparity in housing. People don't understand uh, that. Um, um, someone else may get a, a, a interest rate on a mortgage at 2.5% and you're getting an interest rate on a mortgage at 3%. That may not sound like a lot, but over that's the course of time, that's, that's, that's probably $35,000 depending on the cost of the house. So, and when, when you look at criminal justice, the disparity between sentencing of a, of a white defendant versus a black defendant. So it, it, it does, it does not serve anybody well to stay home because those are the things when you go into the polls, those are the things that you're actually voting for. You remember that quote that says, uh, how do you keep information from black people? You put it in a book, put it in a book, uh -huh. put it yes. in a book. And I feel like that's what is happening now. How do you keep that information? Put it on the news. Yeah. Put, you know, put it in reliable sources and we're not mm -hmm. going to tune in. Yeah. It, it's just, it's, it's really disheartening, but yeah, you know, we, we'll keep the dialogue going. So definitely yeah. I see some news on your uh, Facebook page. I'm going to reach out to you to have another conversation about that. <laughs> but, uh, so I know you don't do social media, like anything like public or anything, but I'm glad you, came in with the discussion, mm -hmm. meaning I know you don't want me of people following you on your personal page, but do you have yeah. a public page for like when you run for office or anything? Did no, you I, I actually had a, a Twitter page for my office, but the young lady who was, who was uh, managing it, she, um, she left to go to, um, she married this guy in Oklahoma. So she left. So, and so I just, I've been, busy with, I've been busy with other things. I hadn't thought about, I have not thought about that Twitter page. I got, I, I actually do need to uh, resurrect it. One of the, I will say this, one of the things that I'm, I'm, um, I'm hoping to, um, to do at Dallas County is to uh, create a, um, a, um, a news station 
uh, it's called uh, DCTV, Dallas County TV, and um, uh, any department head or elected official can go on and talk about the things that uh, that they think um, um, uh, the citizens of Dallas County should um, should know and be aware of. Okay. And so those are those are some of the innovative things that I'm that I that, that I'd like to see Dallas County embrace. That I'm continuing to convince them is the the best direction for us. Technology, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on. This has been great. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, ma'am, for having me. Of course. Have okay. a good evening. <laughs> All right. You too. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. The only way to continue learning is to keep asking questions. And I appreciate John for coming on and being so open because I ask a lot. He had a lot of information. I mean, just a bank like we used to use encyclopedias. You guys use Google or Wikipedia. So he was a Wikipedia of information as it comes to the services of the Dallas County Clerk Office. So I learned a lot and also tying in the emotionality of it, him running from off for office, not from him running for office and then managing that being so innovative and having to combat people actually rejecting what he was trying to do and being bold enough, which is courageous, being courageous enough to send that email to tell people, hey, cut this crap out. Like we have work to do. I'm here to do it. I've been elected. Let me do my job. Like to me, that takes boldness. So we talked about an array of emotions as it related to politics from his experience. And again, I want to thank him for coming on. You guys continue to engage, continue to talk about this openly and, and, and really work through these emotions that we're having. And next week after the election, join me for a conversation. It's free registration, but registration is required because I'm not going to do it on Facebook. It's going to be in a private setting. Just, you know, kind of give us some more privacy, kind of talk about some things. But I'm going to offer you some tips on how to debrief from this election uh, period, if you will. Like, it's been a lot. I keep saying that. I've seen it. it's been chaotic. It's been tumultuous. I don't know what other adjective if you want me to use, but this has been a hot mess. That's all I can say. And I think a lot of us need that space to kind of work through that. So make sure you join me. Go register on my website at www.staciaalexander.com. And I will also put a link uh, in the chat so that you guys can find it. But we need to keep talking about how we emotionally handle things and stop thinking that we can separate who we are as a person from our emotions that actually puts us at a disposition and it's not very good for ourselves and it's not good for the people around us. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'm your host of Goals Don't Have Feelings. Make sure you join in tomorrow night. I have another guest that's coming on. It's going to be great. Good conversation, good dialogue. More than anything is informational. So make sure you follow all of my handles, if you will, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, got a Twitter account, not as active, did get a TikTok account, but I can't figure it out. But anyway, so you guys, I'll see you tomorrow night. I appreciate you joining. Bye-bye.